Stephen Somek uh, just started in this position when it was newly created in January of 2014. Manages the Portage Enterprise Center, Business Incubator, and Accelerator Workforce Training Center owned by the city. Also oversees economic development, planning, zoning, and building inspection functions for the city of Portage. Previously, Economic Development and Energy Sustainable Director for the City of Columbus. And for the past 11 years, he's worked closely with the old Amtrak, Canadian Pacific Rail, to facilitate tourism and economic development in Columbia County. And once upon a time, he was an alderman in Monona, 1986 to 1990. Welcome. pleasure and an honor to be here today. Welcome to our fine city, Portage, where the north uh, begins. What we're seeing right now, because of the current Amtrak station, uh, is vibrant economic development revitalization projects occurring adjacent to the current Amtrak depot. Um, this is a picture of Jack's Cap, which opened in 1916. And it is, believe it or not, in all of Portage, the most popular uh, and happening restaurant and bar. It actually was um, an existing bar that had been boarded up for like 30 years uh, that was going in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and I think early 60s. Uh, and a relative of Jack, um, his uh, great granddaughter, uh, actually bought it and reopened it and totally redid it in 2016. Um, and um, the movers and shakers of Portage, including the mayor and many city council members, uh, spent a lot of time there. And uh, it's one of my favorite places as well. Uh, so that's going on. Uh, right next door, the Friendly Cavern, another very popular place. So if you come to the Amtrak station, try and stop in there. There are fun places, the food is great, uh, the drinks are strong, and you'll hear a lot of fun stories about Portage. Uh, so that's another great place as well. Uh, what's great about this revitalization program that's adjacent to the Portage Amtrak station is that it's kind of carrying on the tradition of what happened there in the heyday of uh, passenger rail travel in the 1930s. In the 1930s, everything was roaring before the recession hit, and passenger trail was never stronger in this country, and certainly it, it came through Portage in every direction, uh, from Stephen Point to Portage, from Milwaukee through Portage, um, out west uh, and uh, everywhere in between, uh, there was actually a hotel right next to Jack's Tap. And so that whole area in the 20s, 30s, and even 40s uh, was a big commercial and entertainment and um, uh, commercial hub for both the city and the region. So it's kind of coming back uh, with the advent uh, and the popularity of rail travel. Uh, certainly a second uh, train will get the Wisconsin Empire Builder Line. Uh, communities like Portage, a powerful and enhanced amenity tool to retain, retreat, recruit new residents to our rural communities, uh, both young and old alike. Uh, the reason I am here is that we want Portage to grow and prosper, and we've seen a lot of great strides as I've outlined uh, today. But unfortunately, there are communities all over Wisconsin, and I'm sure all over Minnesota, uh, that are really retrenching, uh, people are leaving, young people, young families are going to more urban areas for job opportunities, and older residents, of course, are leaving as well. Um, and for fortunately, very fortunately, Portage, uh, I think, has been able to uh, reverse this trend here. Uh, within the last couple of years, we found the average age in the city of Portage is actually 37. We're very pleased to hear that from the latest demographic report because in most communities, uh, that figure is much higher. And that is because people, especially younger people, younger families are leaving, they're going to more urban areas. Uh, as people retire, they're going to warmer climates. Demographically, people are dying, they're not being replaced. We're not bringing enough people into Wisconsin. We're kind of treading water. So I'm here to tell you uh, as a representative of a small community. Um, unless we grow, and we have a plan for that growth, and attracting all demographics, young and old alike, we're gonna die. <coughs> we're under caps, we're under revenue limits from the state, and unless we increase our tax base, 
uh, there is not going to be the revenue to continue operations, operating our parks, our schools, and funding our roads and infrastructures. Uh, so we're seeing that uh, in very stark realism today in Wisconsin. So Portage is very cognizant of that. We're very lucky, we're very thankful that we have a tool. We have the Amtrak Empire Builder that stops in Portage. And so um, this is something that we view as a tool that will recruit people. And we're seeing a lot of people moving to Portage, not only from the Milwaukee area, the Madison area, but even the Chicago area. I live just north of Portage. I don't live in the city limits. Um, and what I am going to tell you may surprise you, but I'm sure a lot of you will see this as well in your communities, large and small. All of my neighbors are from Chicago or Illinois, every one of them. There are, I don't have any neighbors that are from Wisconsin. All my next door neighbors have moved here, and there's a vibrancy, and there's a love of Wisconsin. They want to be here. They've chosen to live here. They have a higher quality of life than they have had in Rockford or Chicago or suburban Chicago. And that is the key to our survival here in this area. <clears throat> Loggerhead Deco, the company that moved here from Chicago, wanted to get the heck out. So we're growing our tax base, we're growing our population, and uh, if we're going to grow our communities, again, large and small, especially rural communities, we have to have amenities that attract younger people. And as you've indicated today, um, you know, the passenger train um, that we're going to add, hopefully, between Chicago and the Twin Cities is going to be an amenity to attract people to our communities, to Portage. Uh, because younger millennials are not driving as much as we did. They're not buying single family homes. So the Portage and the other communities that we live in, in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, are going to look real different than what they do now. So it's up to us to chart that future, to be advocates for our communities. Um, and as Gaylord Nelson said, former governor and senator, uh, if cities don't work, America doesn't work. So we all, again, need to be advocates for our communities uh, in an enhanced and healthy uh, public transportation system um, and passenger rail system is vital. Uh, because basically, culturally, when you think about it, passenger rail serves a lot of different useful purposes. Not only is it a transportation corridor, but it's a cultural connection uh, that connects urban areas with rural areas like Portage and vice versa. When I want to go somewhere, I live in Portage, I go to Chicago. I take the train, I either take the Hiawatha or I take the Empire Builder if I want to go to the cities. You know, it's incredible. If someone wants to come to the Wisconsin Dells or lives in the Dells, they can do the same thing. So it's an incredible connection that, you know, is needed for a healthy society, in my opinion. So if we're to grow, if we're going to remain vibrant, um, we need that mix, we need that transportation, we need that cultural connection that nothing else can substitute for. And I think rail serves that function. So that basically, um, I'm, start, I'm ending a little early. I'd be happy to take any questions and answers on Portage or anything else I've talked about. And thank you again for visiting Portage today. We appreciate having you. Two quick things to support what you said. The first one, about three years ago, I was talking to a couple of uh, elected officials and administrators in the city of Cambridge, which is on the NLX route. And I said to them, and I was pretty naive, and I said, well, why on earth would you ever support a train? You know, I was pretty blunt, because I couldn't see why. I mean, you're really close to the Twin Cities. And their answer was, and they were really direct with me, we need to keep our people. Exactly. What does that mean? What does that mean? We can't keep teachers, lawyers, anybody with any skill, we can't keep them. If we get a train, they can go to the cities and go to a show and come back. Exactly. They'll come back. And then the second thing I was going to share with, you, with what you're saying, that was an eye-opener for me because I thought, well, the trains are great to get around, but I never thought of that. The second thing is, I think I maybe mentioned this to you already, but in May of 2017, I met with all the, most of the people from Lacrosse all the way up to East Grand Forks, mayors, tourism directors, uh, city managers, I don't know if I said chamber presidents, you know, the, the key people. And they were all in favor of the second train. 
But the thing that shocked me was, in the political climate, the one party was saying, well, there's the rural people, and then there's the urban people. But these people were all rural. I did not meet with anybody in the Twin Cities. And they were 100% behind the second train, 100%. And they were 100% disconnected from their state reps and senators. In fact, in one of them, I'll just say it. It's in the city of Winona. I sat with all those people at a table. The mayor, city manager, tourism director, etc. And I sat down, I was scared to death because they looked mad. They were really mad. I thought, oh God, because they knew why I was there. And it turned out they were mad because their state rep and senator were not listening to them. Not on the second train, but to different issues. So I'm thinking optimistically that's starting to change, at least in my state. I can't speak for Wisconsin. Yeah. So I think you're right on on those issues. You just you hit, hit the nail yeah. on the head. You know, and I think, it, it, I hate to put all of the onus and all the credit at the same time to Governor Abers, but Wisconsin has been a one-party state for about 10 years. The one party controlled the assembly, one party controlled the Senate, one party controlled the governor's office, yeah. and um, there just was no room for dissent. And that's why our transportation uh, funding has just been frozen in time and has gone backwards because yeah. again, and even you know the one party did not agree, as you pointed out, and so that has kind of changed. And I think Governor Evers, even though he's he's a Democrat, he's given the Republicans permission now to think outside the box of transportation funding and go back to kind of a zero-based budgeting thinking to try and you know um, cover our, our expenses that we need to maintain our transportation infrastructure via rail mm -hmm. you know so I think that's that is occurring but younger people staying in Portage and moving to Portage uh, and that is demonstrated by the growth in the demographic age groups of I'd say 30 uh, to 39, uh, there was an article in our paper about a, a young family in their 30s that were actually living in Alaska, and they did research, and they moved here to Portage because they saw all of the growth in our plastics manufacturing sector, and you could walk in the door at Triander or Penda and earn 20 some dollars an hour for starters, and have a much lower housing cost here in um, portage than they have not only in Alaska but certainly in the Madison region. So uh, what are we doing to keep them here and what are they looking for? So they're looking for amenities, they're looking for recreational amenities. Um, we have more parks and more trails, we actually have a couple lakes within the city limits. We have two rivers, uh, we have uh, fishing, um, hunting, uh, snowmobiling. And we have a lot of outdoor, all season recreation activities right at our back door, all over the place here. We have a lot of job opportunities. We have trails. Um, and probably more importantly, the young people, we have really vibrant and um, uh, enlarged uh, arts district and art scene. We have a Portage Center for the Arts, so we have a lot of performing arts venues here. Um, and I know a lot of my friends from Madison, Milwaukee said, are you crazy moving to Portage? And I said, yeah. I can get to Milwaukee very quickly, 30 minutes to Madison. So I said, I love it here. It's a safe, vibrant, you know, friendly, diverse community that's got, you know, just about everything you need. And if you want nightlife or more enhanced artsy, you know, I'm 30 miles from Madison. And they said, enough said. So I think that pretty much says it all. But again, if young people who, particularly those that don't have cars, can hop on a train uh, and they can go to the cities or out west, or they can go to Chicago or Milwaukee, that's huge. That's a huge amenity. And so again, we need to grab on that as rural communities like Portage uh, and convince our legislators to help make it happen. Okay, well thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.